Now let's create our schematic and PCB design. To get into the menu, go up to the File button and select New Electronics Design. This will take us to the new menu. Now we can create our new schematic. Okay. Here we can start looking at all the libraries to see what electronics we may need. So there are many libraries installed automatically, but most of these will not be useful to us. So to get most of our microcontrollers and switches, select this button to add new libraries. Here we can search for the Spark Fun microcontrollers. So let's see. Spark Fun micro controllers. So this is part of the the game really. We have to look for the correct libraries. So I think it's Spark Fun boards. Usually the oh here we are. Spark Fun boards. This is the library you'd want to download. So just click this uh, toggle to download it and you'll get various boards here like the micro pro and the pro micro that we will use in the button box and then we want to type in switches so we can get our switches so i also download the spark fun switches just toggle it here and you can get various switches okay so we can close that and now we can search for the Pro Micro. Here we go, Pro Micro. And we can just double click the library and place it wherever we want. And I'll click OK. And here we have the Pro Micro. This is the SparkFun version, so it might be a little bit different than yours, but it should be mostly the same. Um, here we have the 24 outputs so now we can start inserting our switches so let's search rotary encoders and let's start seeing if there's any encoders we like so down here we can see a preview of the the component so here we have a three pin encoder which is not really like the encoder I have in mind let's check this one no this one won't work this one no this one looks good it's a five pin encoder with two pins for the switches and three pins for the rotary encoder this is almost identical to mine it's identical so here we have one switch let's check if there's any buttons that we like so here we can check momentary buttons see this is a four pin button i don't have a four pin button this one's also four pin and this one's also four pin so we don't really have any buttons like the ones we have so why don't we create a new one so i'll go up here and i'll open a new design and i'll go back to the file button and i'll select new electronics in the library so here we can create a new design electronic so first i like to enable the grid and i'm going to be using inches and it's very recommended that you stay in all these default uh, increments because most electronics use these increments. 
So select display on to have our grid on. Okay. So this will come on. So now let's create a new symbol. The symbol is essentially a drawing of the part we want to do. So let's name this part 12 millimeter push button. So I'll hit OK. And now we need to turn our grid back on. Here we have our grid. So now what we want to do is select pin. So we can rotate this pin by right clicking and we can just move it along. We can also select the length of the pin here, just like there, and various other options. So I'll select the two unit long pin and I'll leave a one gap between the origin. Now it's very important to use the origin as the middle reference for your designs so that you can easily place your components later down the line when you're making PCBs. So I'll put a pin here and I'll rotate it by 180 and put another here. So here we have our two pins. Now we can name the pins by selecting this tool here, the name tool, and selecting the pin. So I'll name this one positive and I'll name this one negative. Here we go. Okay. So now we have our two pins. This will be the momentary button. So let's just create a line to signify the switch that we're going to use. So I'll click on this grid mark and see that the line only wants to create right angled drawings. So to make a straight line, let's select the option. Okay. So now I'll hit the alt key to go into smaller increments and I'll select uh, right about there to place the line. So here we have our switch, the uh, drawing for our switch. So now I'll name the switch, I'll say 12 millimeter push button. And I'll click here to put it right above and I'll click OK. This will actually show up in our PCB, no not the PCB, the electronic design so we can easily identify what this is. So now we can start creating our footprint. Okay, now let's create our footprint. I'll go to the corner and create a new footprint and I'll name it 12 millimeter push button. Okay, and let's select our grid settings on and inches okay so these couple of steps will probably vary for you but in my case i'll be using pass-through holes you can also use surface mount pads which are just usually used for smaller parts but typically you'll use pass-through pads so i'll select it and i'll enter my pin diameter over here so typically I round up a couple hundreds so I can allow some space, but you can do whatever you'd like. So now to place our pins, I'll use these coordinates up here to accurately determine the spacing. So what I need is uh, pins at negative 1.1 and positive 0.1. So I'll go 1, 2 here and one, two in the other direction here. And I'll click okay. And now we can name the, pad, the pads. So I'll name this one positive and this one negative. Okay. Now we can create the outline for our button. So typically here I just estimate the distance. So I'll go about two boxes away 
I'll go to right about here, two boxes here, here, six down, one, two, three, four, five, six, here, here, and here. Click OK. And now we can name our button. So I'll go here, 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter push button. And I can place the name here. So all these gray markings here are used to identify what should go where on your PCB. So all these names and these outlines will actually be shown on the PCB. So you can use them as a reference. So now we are basically done with our PCB part for our button. Okay, now that we finished our footprint, we can go back up and create the 3D design. So I'll create a new package. And here we have various presets that you can adjust. Typically these are used for integrated circuits and small LEDs and those sorts of things. But uh, there typically won't be any buttons and things of that nature. So you'll probably have to design your own button. So um, this is really just, you can go up here, create solid design and just design your button in regular CAD. So yeah. Now that you've made your symbol, footprint and package, let's group these all into one new device. I'll name my device 12 millimeter push button. And they'll add the new symbol. Here we can select the symbol you made previously and drop it down in the center. I'll click OK. And now we need to insert our new footprint. Add new local package. And let's add the footprint. Now let's connect both pins. So here's where naming your pins is really useful. Here we select the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. I'll select OK. And here you have your own device that you can use in your schematics and PCBs. Now that you've created your device, let's search in the tab. 12 millimeter. And here's my new device. So I'll double click and I'll insert it in the grid. So now that you have your own devices, you can start creating your button matrix and referencing your hand-drawn schematic you can create your schematic in the design so you can select net to connect pins which will essentially act as your wires so here you can connect anything really here and you can just go along and mimic your hand-drawn schematic so this will lead us to our PCB design. Okay, now that you've created your schematic in the design file, let's start by pushing our schematic to a PCB design. So here I created a mock-up design. So I'll click this button here to switch to a PCB document. And we can start by editing our PCB board. So to edit the size of the board, we can select one of these corners and select the line. So to edit our PCB board, we can change the coordinates of the endpoints of each line segment. So for example, I can do 6500 and 6500 as one endpoint and that will move the line further to the right so here we can do 6500 as well and that will raise the height so just like that you can edit all the endpoints of each line to edit your PCB so let me go back and go into inches and I'll turn the display on so now we can close this tab and go into PCB design. 
so let's select our pro micro and as you can see all the nets that are attached to each button will be dragged along as you move each component so i'll place the pro micro there i'll place the rotary encoder there and i'll place the button right over here so now that you got all your components onto the board itself in your arrangement you would probably use coordinates to align each component in the center point so for example here you can move your button and take note of these coordinates here that show where the button center point is so you can go back into your button box housing design to check your coordinates so that you accurately align each button to the board so there's no error so i'll leave mine to right about there so now that we have everything aligned we can actually uh, route our nets so the easiest way to do this is to actually have our program auto route it so it will only generate nets for the top and bottom layer as you can see selected auto all others are selected na so i'll select continue and i'll start the auto run so here we can see all the ai uh, created nets so these will automatically route our nets and they will show um, if each uh, board has vias so typically you don't want vias because it's more expensive so here the design has created zero vias in all uh, options so this is the best option to route your nets but you can also do it manually so you can route manually by clicking your pin and simply dragging your net along so i'll go over here and you can use the white line over here as a reference to where your net needs to go so i'll do this and i'll go right about there so that's your net routed so essentially you can apply these skills that you've learned to create your own pcb for your button box so for reference, here is my button box schematic. I have five columns you can see here with the additional six over here. It's my power button and my three columns here. And you can see all my uh, nets connected to the Arduino. So this schematic would later become this PCB here and I auto routed all the nets using the same feature I showed you before and I uh, located all the buttons using the coordinates up here and so now I know that they are accurately lined up with the button box lid I created previously